Walmart Plus members save on meeting up with friends. Save on having them over for dinner with free delivery with no hidden fees or markups. That's groceries plus napkins plus that vegetable chopper to make things a bit easier. Plus, members save on gas to go meet them in their neck of the woods. Plus, when you're ready for the ultimate sign of friendship, start a show together with your included Paramount Plus subscription. Walmart Plus members save on this plus so much more. Start a 30-day free trial at walmartplus.com. Paramount Plus, a central plan only. Separate registration required. See Walmart Plus terms and conditions. When your space has the long-lasting, noticeable scent of Airwick Vibrant Scented Oils, you'll want to invite everyone over, from book club to the fantasy league, even the in-laws. It smells amazing. Airwick Vibrant Scented Oils are infused with two times more natural essential oils versus regular Airwick Scented Oils for our most authentic, nature-inspired fragrance experience. Hmm. Transform your space with scents like white sage and mahogany or lavender and water lily. Now that's a breath of fresh Airwick. Luxury is meant to be livable. Discover the new leather collection at Ashley with premium quality leather sofas, recliners, and more, all built to last. No matter how many spills, scuffs, or pet-related mishaps come its way, the leather collection at Ashley is made with the durability you need for the whole family. Shop the new leather collection at Ashley and find chairs starting at $499.99 and sofas at $599.99. Ashley, for the love of home. How's it going? And welcome to episode 153 of On The Wire. Proud member of the Pitcher List Podcast Network. You can follow the pod on the Twitter at On The Wire Pod. I am Adam Howe. You can follow me at 80 grade. That's all spelled out. And Kevin Hasting is at Hasting Kevin on the Twitter. We have a great show lined up for you today. We finish off our 2024 preview episodes today. We're going to focus on the chase, namely the pesky pitching counting categories of wins and strikeouts. We'll get into the weeds of all that in a little bit. Before we do, Kevin, glad to have you back with us. TGI, TGFBI is on its way. A little further along for some than others, as as the joke will can you know never get worn out every single year. Uh, which uh, which boat is your league in? Um, are you further along? Or are you a little back behind? I think we're still further along. Um, I know we were well ahead of you yesterday uh, when when we touched base. Uh, we've slowed down a little bit, but uh, we're moving along at a pretty good pace. It's it's it is absolutely amazing, Adam. Uh, TGFBI, a week's worth of spring training games now. Um, walked in, so my my tradition is to to go to the grocery store on recording day and get the exact beer I want to have while we're recording. (laughs) And uh, Kona Brewing has a a seasonal here. They're Coco Brown, spelled K-O-K-O. Walked in today, and there it was in the cooler. And all I heard in my head, I swear to you, I heard Michael Govier singing It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year. As I grabbed some Cocoa Brown, it was thinking baseball. I mean, that thing was so awesome. We have one of our one of my favorite people. I spend a lot of time with him when we're in Arizona as our guest today. It's the little things, Adam. I'm having an amazing day. That was absolutely amazing. Um, yes. Like I know, I, I can only imagine how much time and effort and work that was put into that, Mike. Uh, but please, please, I, I hope we have like versions two three four five and six of that because that was absolutely insanely good um oh man it was it was delightful delightful we even Uh, got a cameo yeah we did we got a little flash a little (laughs) little flash cameo i was it was pretty that was pretty cool i mean that was pretty cool because there were some there were some you know good good names good resources out there uh and it was nice to be included in that so mike thanks for that um and you know my Palazzo podcast draft. I, this is what I was going to say about like the slow draft thing. If 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 that is a problem for you, first and foremost, you know what you're getting yourself into. You know it can happen. It will happen. If you have that much of an issue with it, just join another draft. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I mean, I, I tend to be in at least one other draft during TGFBI just so I can draft a little bit more often. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm 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 liking how it's it's turning out so far. It's also nice that my other draft is in round like forty, uh, compared to round thirteen. So I'm very I'm making very very different picks for obvious reasons. It's it's also kind of crazy that it 
just so happens to be specifically TGFBI drafts where the Michael Garcia love is is coming to coming to light, <laughs> right? Because I had just looked at his ADP recently, like over the past month, over the past couple of weeks, in a, in a couple of different formats in all of the Earth leagues, and his min pick was still after one ninety. Now we're seeing 170s, and uh, we were talking yesterday about sweating picks in the 180s. And Ryan Bloomfield on Bubba in the Bloom last night said I sniped him when I took him at 189. <laughs> so uh, he's moving up. Yeah, I, I grabbed him just it was my last pick made in because we're in the 13th round right now at 186. Yeah, we were we were messaging back and forth when we were respectively in that round. Yours your text came like two days prior to mine, so we're yeah we're still <laughs> a little behind you guys, but that's. That's perfectly fine. That means I'll still be drafting when you'll be done. So ha ha ha. Exactly. So that's how you got to look at it. So uh, we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, and luckily, we have some help to do so. Um, if you're following along at home, you see it on the little ticker at the bottom. So I will not waste any more time introducing our very special guest, Joe Orico. You know him from the Twitter at Joe Orico 99. And you probably know his work over at Sport Ethos and the Fantasy MLB Today podcast. Uh, Joe is going to help us kind of wade the waters of chasing wins, chasing strikeouts, those volume pitching categories as you're drafting in your 2024 drafts. Uh, but before we get into all of that, Joe, thank you so much for joining us uh, and glad you're here, man. How you doing? It's always great to talk with you guys. I'll come on as often as you'll have me. It's it's always great to, uh, to see you. Kevin and I have spent a lot of time together in Arizona. Adam, we spend time together on the pod, and it's always uh, fun to catch up. So I appreciate you guys inviting me. on. I'm sure it's going to be a great night. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was pumped that you were able to make this work. I know this probably wasn't the most ideal time for you, so I really appreciate you like being flexible and coming on because – we're talking pitching and I know that, you know, you put a lot of time and a lot of effort into your pitching rankings. And then obviously it goes a lot further than just wins in case. That is what we're going to focus on today, of course. Uh, but your rankings obviously go a lot deeper than that. Uh, and you got a lot going on over at Sport Ethos. Uh, we were talking a little bit uh, before we started recording, but why don't you kind of give our listeners a kind of a insight into what's going on over there? You have a spare half hour because there's a lot going on. Uh, we just launched our draft guide earlier this week, and there are already about 20 articles in there, both nice. redraft and dynasty content. Uh, I got to shout out our, our dynasty guy, Anthony Cates, who had just put so much. I think it was about 50,000 words worth of dynasty write-ups uh, across all different positions. He did so much for us. Uh, we got rankings, projections. We have strategy pieces, sleepers and busts. Uh, we're writing up drafts, so there's a lot of great stuff in the draft guide. Uh, on the written side and then also we just announced today that we have our uh, draft tracker officially launched and that will be i shouldn't say officially launched it'll be by the time you guys hear this actually it probably will be on the podcast side sunday monday uh that will be when you will be able to start using your uh, using our technology for your own drafts so essentially you'll have this sheet open on the side this um excel sheet open and you will load the players that are drafted in your draft and it'll tell you where you're lacking, where you need to be targeting in terms of categories. And the, the really fun part about this whole process is that these are powered by Ariel Cohen's ATC projections. Uh, we've been working this out behind the scenes with Ariel for a few weeks now, and we're really excited because obviously those are battle tested every year as the most accurate projections. So you can use those to help you in your drafts. You can set it up for 15 team leagues, 10 team leagues, whether it's a main event or a free home league. Uh, we think we can help you across a lot of different formats. So definitely be checking all that out. Uh, at sportsethos.com guys yeah and you got uh, you have your own listener leagues starting up as well over on fan tracks if i'm not believe I saw, I saw that tweet earlier today yeah yeah we're going to be doing some listener leagues as well and we're running a little promotions if you enter into our uh, listener leagues over on fan tracks uh you'll get a bit of a discount on our draft guide and you can reach out to me uh personally and i'll let you guys know about those specials but yeah a lot of fun this time of year man between listener leagues and I, i'm in your listener league as well i yep. was the first draft i did this year um, and just so many uh, subsequent drafts. It's the most wonderful time of the year, as Govier so beautifully put it earlier. <laughs> um, and like you guys mentioned, I was like a little snippet in that video as well. It's really yep. cool yep. Uh, to be shouted out by Mike. He's a great guy. Anybody listening, um, you need to be checking that out on Govier's Twitter. It's it's a must must see content. I mean, if you're listening to this and you don't follow Govier on Twitter, I don't. Um, I'm, you're the very you're very odd man out. Um, that's for sure. But uh, you, yeah, make sure that you're you're finding Govier on on the Twitter. And 
checking out that video, if nothing else, because it's, you know, as I tweeted out, I'm like, I could watch that like all day and every day for, you know, it should be just the thing you wake up to every day. Let's make it part of your alarm or something. Cause it's, it's yeah, it's amazing. Uh, we can't talk about that enough, but, we can because we've got to talk about some other things here, uh, namely some news and notes over the course of the last week. Um, it's it's spring training. So obviously a lot of stuff is happening during spring training, but that also brings like the mega news. You'd think by now I would have at least two big and uh, like news items to to talk about namely you know is blake snell, snell. And, jordan, <laughs> and, and, and jordan montgomery actually gonna sign with anybody i don't know um but you know that's spoiler it's not what we're gonna talk about here but i have i was able to find some things worth talking about so kevin we're gonna we're gonna lead it off with usually we leave the injuries till the end i'm gonna start it off today with the injuries and go to the signings later uh first and foremost in tampa uh, Josh Lowe is, uh, has hip inflammation, uh, no necessarily news about whether or not he will, you know, be sidelined through opening day or not, but regardless, what kind of impact do you see this kind of an injury or to Josh Lowe being or having on the Tampa Bay lineup in the playing time for everybody else? If he were to start on the IL. Yeah. Hopefully this doesn't change anything. Sounds like he's going to be shut down for six days. Uh, there's hope that he may be able to return to game action in 10 to 15 days. That would lead to him probably being in the lineup on opening day or shortly after. However, th- this doesn't sound good to me. The way they're they're kind of tiptoeing around these timelines and and talking about we'll we'll see how things look after the six days we're hopeful maybe game action in 10 to 15 uh i'm not a doctor uh but hip inflammation just does not sound good to me for a baseball swing uh sounds like it, it could lead to other issues and be something that takes a while to heal and just need rest before you can get back at it even as it it is becoming mostly healed it it feels to me like that's something that would still need to be rested so i'm i'm really leery here and i i think it you know we've talked about harold ramirez this off season we talked about johnny uh laduca and and some of these guys i think probably are going to get a little bump at least early in the season because i do expect him to miss some time early hopefully we see him in april I am not optimistic for uh, the the um, the notes that are saying that the, there is a possibility we see him opening day. I'm not very optimistic about that. Yeah, um, and I know we see a lot of news about inflammation in general. This start of spring training is you know players are warming up and getting back into it, and obviously you know their bodies are you know all making the adjustments accordingly, and it doesn't always turn into something big. Uh, but yeah, hip inflammation in a hitter of any kind, uh, obviously is something to take note, uh, look, talking about players who get injured or injuries in general, uh, make I'm going to give a shout out to one of the more recent on the corner episodes where we took the interview that, um, Nick did with, uh, Jeff Lyman, uh, MD, and they talk about a whole bunch of injury prone players or injuries that have happened to players over the course of the last couple months. Um, and so make sure you give that a listen. He gives a lot of really good expert analysis on injuries, um, especially baseball related ones. Uh, so check on, check out, check that out on the, on the corner podcast feed. Uh, Joe, we got Josh Lowe is going at an ADP in the month of February across all NFBC leagues. So yes, there's some, you know, there's some different leagues in there, but in general, just over the last month, he's got an ADP of 72. Um, does this kind of an injury? Are, are you willing to like take the discount and, and buy buy quote buy low, um, or is this something that you really got to get a decent discount to be considering him net with this news? So I got nothing against Josh Lowe, but I've done 11 NFBC leagues and I haven't clicked his name once this year for what it's worth. So I'm not going to be more inclined to do it now unless we're seeing, to your point, like a precipitous fall. He'd have to go, I don't know, three, four rounds beyond ADP. And when I, I don't really see that happening with him, uh, I, th- I think most people are probably going to look at this as he's still going to be ready for opening day. Cause I've, I've heard a lot of people say they're not moving him in his rent and their ranks. They're going to leave it as is. So I don't think there's going to be that much concern among drafters, which will keep his price to a point where 
like I said, I wasn't interested before. Now it's like, ah, man, it, it would really take a lot for me to to take Josh Lowe well past pick 100 at sure. this point. Um, nowhere inside the top 100 for sure. Yeah, it, it's an interesting situation because if you had told me, like, I just haven't quite pulled the trigger on him, then this might be that opportunity or like it kind of pushes him back 10 picks around whatever. And then all of a sudden he's a little bit more interesting to you. But if you're just like completely out already, yeah, I don't think that this kind of news is going to push him back far enough for you to make that kind of commitment. Yeah. Uh, one, one more quick thing on Josh Lowe. I, I think I I'm the same uh, as Joe. I haven't drafted him anywhere. I don't think it's as much my opinion in him as uh, where he goes in drafts. That's typically where I'm looking closer, starting pitcher, catcher, right? And specifically when he's going there towards the end of the, the fifth round in 15 team leagues. So, but, you know, we're talking about a guy that's projected for 20 home runs, 30 stolen bases with close to 300 batting average in, in 135 games. If If he drops out of that, area of the draft and i'm optimistic that things are going well we start hearing about him taking batting practice and things and he has dropped a couple of rounds out of that area then i might become interested here fair enough joe i gotta ask i mean the first question i'm gonna ask you has to do with pitching obviously and this is more of me telling on myself than anything else can you please tell me who andrew wance is and why i should care that he's moving into the washington rotation Andrew wants so is he with the Angels or is he with the Nationals? Because that's something that I was kind of not a hundred percent sure about. Um, because I saw a couple of different um things about that. So I'm not I thought he was with the Angels, but just regardless of where he is, I don't have that much interest in him. Um, if you look at the supporting metrics that he's put up over his um small sample size at the big league level and across the minors, it wasn't that impressive. The strikeouts were kind of good at the lower levels of the minor leagues as that as he went up the levels and touched the major league. Uh, we're looking at not amazing stuff. The supporting metrics are are fine. Like they're not they're not terrible, but again, you're not looking at a lot of win opportunity. I don't even really think this is gonna manifest itself to a regular season job. I think this is more of just stretching him out a little bit for spring training and he'll be more of a long reliever. Um, but I, I don't see any real fantasy value here, unfortunately. It's something to take note of, like maybe, because there were stretches in the minors where he was pretty interesting. But as of right now, I just I just can't see myself drafting him or being that interested. Yeah, good good call on that. That's definitely a typo on my outline. And this shows you how much I know about Andrew Wance, as I just admitted to my, <laughs> admitted earlier. Yeah, he's with the Angels. Uh, and you know, supposedly being moved into the rotation. Yeah, I, I agree. It's more than likely it's probably like a stretching out thing. Uh, but this just also goes into our next uh, our next point that I'll get to that the Angels really aren't allowed to have nice things, uh, and so they are forcing you know Wance to be into the, in in their rotation. Uh, he's only been drafted, Kevin, in one draft that is completed in the month of February, and I assume that came. Well, has, he has an ADP of 750. So that came at the very end um, of a DC. And it was probably just because somebody had saw this news at the last second. It's like, and I have a final fifth, 50th pick. Um, do, you, do you see this extra opportunity for him to be anything more than that? No, not unless we see something that we haven't seen from him in the past. Uh, I, the, the wording of it's kind of weird, right? Ron Washington said that he's going to continue starting in spring training games for now. So I completely agree with Joe. This is just to, so that he is stretched out. He might be one of the first guys they go to if they need a sixth starter. Uh, long relief, probably, I would guess, will be his role uh, if he doesn't break camp with the big league club. He might start games in the minors to stay stretched out. But yeah, I, I don't see much here. All right. Well, we'll stick with the Angels now and talk about how uh, my most rostered player, Robert Stevenson, is hurt. Um, and again, the Angels are not allowed to have nice things. Kevin, is this like more, this is just more solidified Carlos Estevez as the closer, which technically we were already told was the case both by Stevenson and by the angels in general. We just kind of refused like as a community, I think refused to believe it when Stevenson signed with the angels because 
we all kind of wanted to see Steven, Stevenson succeed in a closer role wherever he ended up signing. Um, and I know I took a lot of chances on him in early drafts before he signed, thinking, you know, he'll sign somewhere where he'll get the opportunity. Um, but so should I be dropping Stevenson in that first fab period based on his in, his now now his injury and the solidification of Carlos Estevez? And Estevez has been doing really well in spring training so far as well. Yeah, this is kind of tricky. So typically, I believe managers when they tell us about their closing position because they usually don't tell us much. When they do tell us something, then I'm like, oh, uh, take note of that. However, the way Ron Washington presented this, that, that Carlos Estevez is our closer, and that's all I'm going to talk about that. <laughs> is how he finished it that led me to believe like uh there's more here that he doesn't want to talk about however then this injury yes this is going to be carlos estevez at least to start the season we kind of assumed that anyway i think this does give those of us that that have drafted estevez a, a little sigh of relief he's at least going to start the season with the job we know he wasn't nearly as good in the second half as he was early in 2023 and so if those issues pop back up and stevenson is healthy he's gonna he's they plan to clear him to start throwing already in a few days so this may have just been a false alarm that's the hope uh first fab run for most leagues would be about three weeks away so hopefully we know more before you have to make that decision even with the news that estevez uh is the, the closer according to the team and the fact that the, these current events probably shore that up a little bit uh for the time being stevenson's one of these guys like brian abreu like matt brash when he's healthy uh like some of these other setup guys that have really nasty stuff such great ratios big strikeout numbers that he can be valuable to our teams whether they're getting saves or not so if he's still throwing and there's even a timeline of when he's going to get into game action by that first fab run. I probably will not drop him in most spots. Yeah. I, I obviously you got to also keep in mind where these players are uh, on their contracts. Estevez is in his final year of his contract becomes a free agent after the 24 season. Uh, and Stevenson is signed with the angels through 2026. So, we, we all have our expectations for the Angels at this stage of the game. Uh, Joe, would you expect them to, if for whatever, you know, would you expect them to be spotlighting Estevez in the closer role through Ju into July so that, you know, they can put him on the trade block and get something for him, knowing that they have Stevenson in the wings to kind of fill that role? Yeah, I think the plan was always to have Estevez close. And I think fantasy, the fantasy world kind of, lost their minds with Stevenson because of what he did in the second half. And we were kind of wish casting a closer role upon him. And as soon as he signed with the angels, like he was shooting up draft boards like crazy. And I understand it, but I think it was kind of always Estevez was always going to be Estevez. And we just kind of were, were hoping for something different. That was probably never going to happen. Maybe it was going to happen. Um, now in terms of holding on to him, dropping him, maybe you can hold him for now, but the volatility of relievers in general is so high. Is he going to be able to repeat what he did in the second half last year? Very likely not. We're not talking about a team that's going to have a lot of save opportunities to begin with. Probably we're looking at a 70 win team here. So I just think maybe you could get something out of it. Maybe. But in most cases, you know, if you're playing in a 12 team league on Yahoo, on CBS, please do not worry about these guys. This is the situation that you're going to be dealing with if you're a guy like me in TGFBI where you have one closer through the first 250 picks and then you pick Carlos Estevez because you don't really have another way to go. But these are not situations <laughs> where uh, you really want to be putting yourself into because I think it's a bit of a mess. Um, I think it is Estevez, but even if it is Estevez, we're talking about a guy who 25 saves is going to come along with a 1.4 whip and a 4.3 ERA. So yeah, I think it's him, but I'm, pretty pretty much avoiding it altogether where i can sure yeah i mean if you get to a point like i'm at joe and you only have the one closer through 200 picks 
there's not a whole lot of options between like pick 150 and 250 anyway. Uh, so if you don't make it to 150 with two closers, you might as well wait until, you know, Estevez is still on the board. Hopefully he still is. But with this news, I would expect him to come up a little bit um, as people start coming to their senses uh, on that situation. Walmart Plus members save on meeting up with friends. Save on having them over for dinner with free delivery with no hidden fees or markups. That's groceries plus napkins plus that vegetable chopper to make things a bit easier. Plus, members save on gas to go meet them in their neck of the woods. Plus, when you're ready for the ultimate sign of friendship, start a show together with your included Paramount Plus subscription. Walmart Plus members save on this plus so much more. Start a 30-day free trial at walmartplus.com. Paramount Plus, a central plan only. Separate registration required. See Walmart Plus terms and conditions. Luxury is meant to be livable. Discover the new leather collection at Ashley with premium quality leather sofas, recliners, and more, all built to last. No matter how many spills, scuffs, or pet-related mishaps come its way, the leather collection at Ashley is made with the durability you need for the whole family. Shop the new leather collection at Ashley and find chairs starting at $499.99 and sofas at $599.99. Ashley, for the love of home. As a person with a very deep voice, I'm hired all the time for advertising campaigns. But a deep voice doesn't sell B2B. And advertising on the wrong platform doesn't sell B2B either. That's why if you're a B2B marketer, you should use LinkedIn ads. LinkedIn has the targeting capabilities to help you reach the world's largest professional audience. That's right. Over 70 million decision makers all in one place. All the big wigs, then medium wigs. Also small wigs who are on the path to becoming big wigs. Okay, that's enough about Wix. LinkedIn ads allows you to focus on getting your B2B message to the right people. So, does that mean you should use ads on LinkedIn instead of hiring me, the man with the deepest voice in the world? Yes. Yes, it does. Get started today and see why LinkedIn is the place to be to be. We'll even give you a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. I'm going to stay in the bullpen range here, uh, Joe. And as as Kevin alluded to, Matt Brash is hurt or is he? I'm not sure. It doesn't seem to be as as concerning as the initial reports were, where people were thinking he was going to be out for the entire year. And now he seems to be ramping back up. What's your overall take on Brash's uh, um, value at this point? Um, if you were to if you were at that point right now where he's popping into ADP and you're in a draft. Uh, Is this still somebody who you think is going to provide you value all season long um, or just like you said, the volatility of relievers in in, and whatnot, not, not worth the time in a standard league with just saves. It's only going to be 15 team territory for me for brash. And even then this is going to, this is kind of concerning. So the initial report was, and it was kind of all over the place. It was, it was a roller Mm -hmm. coaster. He's done for the year. And then, no, he's going to throw on Tuesday. So I, <laughs> that's very different. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of concerning that there would even be that kind of whiff of that kind of potential that he'd be out for the year or anything like that. Um, now they say he's going to start playing catch next week. He won't be ready for opening day. Um, it's a positive development for sure, but I, I think that this is a situation where I think it's better to just stay away. We're not talking about somebody who is going to be a high roi guy for fantasy unless something happens to andres munoz knock on wood brash is kind of a, a save plus hold league guy or a deep league target but i think in most cases um again most fantasy players can be avoiding him it was a nice thought earlier on in the sea and draft season that you can kind of roster him he's going to give you a lot of strikeouts especially in those save plus hold leagues he'll give you the odd win and he can kind of carry you some weeks where you don't want to stream a pitcher but I think that situation just became a lot riskier with this whole situation. Like he might be back on Tuesday. He might be fine, but uh, do I really want to start stockpiling injuries for relief pitchers before the season even starts? Uh, I think it's just a little bit too risky for me right now. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, all right. We're going to, we're going to fly through this one. Cause I just think it was a funny thing. I didn't, I don't have any minor league signings here. So I had to throw something similar to it, Kevin on here. Uh, Sam Hilliard, he rejoins the Rockies. Um, my question is, is he now old enough to play for Colorado? Will they actually play him? Yeah, that's the funny thing, right? Because that 
that's that's what they'll do to us. <laughs> yeah, you know, we think it was oh, the long time. And, and Sam yeah. Hilliard, and this is what the Rockies did to us. Sam Hilliard's thirty years old now. That's what the Rockies did. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Rockies. And and now we we uh, Nolan Jones is probably safe, but Sean Bouchard, Brenton Doyle, yeah, the 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 guys we want to see in their outfield now. Well. Now that now they have Sam Hilliard back, and yeah, I I could see them just completely screwing this up again uh, by playing him this time when they wouldn't play him before. So it, it, it's something to keep an eye on. Um, uh, to see how spring goes, see how the early going goes. Uh, he'll, he'll he'll make this team, I think. So uh, if if he starts getting playing time, he's got that power speed conduct. Uh, combo playing matchups on a week to week basis. Not somebody I'm going to run out and draft, but uh, the Rockies have done crazier things than all of a sudden we see Sam Hilliard playing every day. So keep an eye on it. I mean, it's never happened before. Why not now? <laughs> it's like it's like the Arrested Development mean It's like it does. It's never worked for them, but it might for us. Exactly. Uh, yeah, were you, uh, Joe, were you always or at any point a Sam like Hilliard truther uh, while he was coming up with the Rockies, or did you always just know Rockies are going to Rocky? Never a truther. Some, like He was somebody that does have a little bit of pop, some speed. Colorado is always a little bit interesting, but at this point, I mean, I'd have to be in a D.C. that's like 100 around D.C., or I, I, don't, I can't even think of a situation right now. Uh, he struck out 42% of the time last year in 40 games. It's rough. I mean, if he's getting regular playing time, then we should be sending uh, some thoughts out to the people in Colorado. It's going to be a tough year if he's getting regular time out there. I, I like the idea of a 100-round DC. It's like an ultra marathon. It's like just back-to-back marathons. I'm like, I, don't, I have no idea how you would even possibly – wrap your mind around that at this point um especially if you've already done a couple of them uh all right we'll stay we'll get back into pitching here some really really sad news uh tristan beck of san francisco he got diagnosed with an aneurysm in his upper arm joe uh he, you know he's fighting for a rotation spot something some people just assumed he already had a spot in the rotation in san francisco but how do you see the giants rotation rounding out now that that's not an option your guess is as good as mine at this point. It's looking pretty rough, but the I hear line, there's some pretty good players still available on on the free agent market. <laughs> I mean, we're getting to a point. As a side note, with with Snell and Montgomery, who you, who were kind of alluding to without alluding to them, I'm not even going to be interested if they sign in a couple of weeks from now because they're going to have no ramp up time. What are we? How many injuries are we going to be having throughout the season already? And then we have pitchers who are going to have a short spring training with a new team and getting used to a new environment. So I think the likely the likeliest thing, and I did see a report today that it seems like the Giants, and by the time you guys are hearing this on the podcast feed, maybe Blake Snell is a Giant. That's what they should do. That's what they need to do. The rotation at this point, I mean, Kyle Harrison, I really, really like Kyle Harrison. I think that he's going to be a really, really good pitcher, but he can't be the number two starting pitcher for your team at this point when he's got, what was it, 40 innings under his belt at the big league level? Um, I think there's, outside of Logan Webb, we don't know what's going to happen here. Um, Harrison, like, I want to believe in, yes. Jordan Hicks is not a starting pitcher, I don't, and not in my opinion. He's going to be back in the bullpen by the time April comes around. I like Keaton Wynn, um, but this this team is in desperate, desperate need of a free agent signing or a trade of some kind because this, I mean, they know they're not going to be terribly competitive, but this is really bad stuff. Sean Hegeli is the guy that they've slotted into the number five spot. He wasn't a very good starting pitcher even in the minor league, so the long and short of it is it's going to have to come from outside of the organization at this point. Alex Cobb will come back at some point to help out as well, but I don't think it's enough. Yeah, and of course they have Robbie Ray waiting in the wings Robbie for the Ray, end. Yeah, yeah. So I know, you know, Kevin will be, you know, on the wire really quickly when he becomes closer and closer to becoming available. I uh, almost drafted him in a DC. Almost. Almost. Kevin, I'm disappointed. Yeah, I mean, do you what do you, what odds would you put on if you had to put odds on that they're signing the Giants are signing one of these at least you know one of these two pitchers we keep talking about Montgomery or Snell specifically based on this news and just the fact that they've got nothing else going on. Oh, as close to as close Even to 100% yeah, as, yeah. as I could get with without 
full saying 100 depends on how many decimal spots you want me to go after the 99 uh, yeah i think by the time this episode airs one of these two guys and probably blake snell is a san francisco giant all right there we go well you heard it here first before well if you're watching live you hear you heard it before uh recorded and there you go breaking news uh take that passing uh we got you uh <laughs> let's move into some a trade, Kevin. Uh, Manuel Margot gets traded again from the Dodgers to Minnesota. Uh, they wanted to open up a roster spot in LA to add Enrique Hernandez to their roster. Uh, but I'm assuming Margot just kind of fills that Michael A. Taylor role um, with the Twins, or do you see him having a little bit more of an everyday presence in the outfield for Minnesota? No, I see him having less. I think he's a strict short side platoon. We've seen Minnesota trending in this direction, playing the matchups. You know, it's been Tampa for years, San Francisco the past few. We've seen Minnesota trending in this direction. And uh, at times, uh, maybe even more so than what we've seen Tampa and San Francisco do. So I, I think he is short side of platoon only. I think when he starts against lefties and a righty is in the game, he gets pinch hit for. Uh, I think vice versa. I think he'll pinch hit versus lefties. He'd be a defensive replacement at the end of games, but he won't get the number of starts that Michael A. Taylor did. So this is a very deep league play uh, due to the limited plate appearances. But um, with, with his speed and, and when they have uh, uh, full game weeks with with some lefties coming up, uh, he'll, he'll be somebody we'll talk about throughout the season. As I've said about a lot of players recently, I think we'll be talking about Manny Margot a couple of times in 2024. Uh, but I, I think he's strictly short side platoon in Minnesota. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, I, you threw me off a little bit because you you, were, you pulled to me and you, you kept saying that he was in San Francisco. I'm like, wait a minute, I don't remember him playing San Francisco, but oh, did San I? Diego, <laughs> San Diego. I forgot he played in San Diego. Like that's just like <laughs> the, uh, the kind of role he kind of carved out in Tampa, and uh, you know, spent like you know a minute in in LA. Obviously, not playing a game for them. Uh, Joe, I'm just gonna jump right into the next one here because I think that pretty much. Uh, clarifies that situation. Uh, Brandon Crawford, he signs with St. Louis, uh, the Cardinals. What role does Crawford play uh, with the Cardinals? And what does his present act- presence actually do to the current roster's options in the infield? I think it's a really strange addition. Um, you know, I think the thing that people are saying is it's a veteran in the locker room, in the, in the clubhouse, whatever. They have a lot of veterans already on this team. Um, The youngest member of the pitching staff is 33 years old. They got Goldschmidt. They got Arenado. There's a lot of veterans already. I think that this is potentially, and I don't know that it's for sure, but it might just take away some playing time from Mason Wynn. Not that it'll be a lot necessarily, but I don't think they signed him to have him sit full time. It's only $2 million for a one-year deal. It's nothing serious. But even if it's a couple days a week, taking away playing time for Mason Wynn is not cool. Not something I want to see here, um, but that is, I think, the likeliest possibility um, in terms of what we're gonna we're gonna probably see that Mason win in terms of your projections. If it was 140 games, maybe now it's 130, 125, or something like that. I don't think that Crawford has any real fantasy relevance unless you're in a very deep NL only league. I think this is more going to be just a headache for fantasy managers more than anything else. Yeah, it, it, I agree. It seemed like an odd place for him to land. I, I expect the Crawford to land somewhere. Um, but I guess it, like age, if age is a factor, it does make sense that he goes to St. Louis. They have a very similar mindset that we are kind of joking around with the Rockies earlier, um, where they just have a type, right? Um, we've been joking about the average age of their rotation in St. Louis for many, many years, it seems, uh, at this point. And it really hasn't changed to your, to your point you just made, uh, Kevin, last point. I just added this to the rundown. I don't know why I missed this. I think it just came through today, maybe late last night. Uh, but Anthony Disclafani, uh, he's behind with some elbow soreness. Of course, never want to see that out of a pitcher, especially even in spring training at any time of the year. Uh, but he is behind. There's no exact timetable for him to uh, to return, but he might be doing long toss soon. We're not sure. Uh what what are your expectations here and are or are you just happy to kind of see the opening for other options in the twins rotation 
that's where I was going. Uh, you know, we were talking about Louis Varland earlier, and uh, this those that have been drafting him, you know, we're never happy to see somebody injured, but we can get excited about an opportunity. And the interesting thing would be this is the final year of a three year, $36 million contract for Tony Disco. And if he does miss time and is performing okay uh, as, as he's rehabbing, but uh, Louis Varland is doing what uh, many, it seems like, over the past few days uh, seem to think he may do in 2024, then what happens uh, in Minnesota. So I think for now, I think it's uh, probably um, a little bit of excitement for those that have drafted Varland. I think it piques interest in those that haven't yet, but may have been considering it and then we will have to keep a, an eye on how how minnesota rolls with this i uh, my inclination is if, if varland's out performing desclafani that the varland will play in front of him uh minnesota uh they like i when we were talking manny margot they 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 are an analytical team now one one of the top ones if, if not the top uh, as far as starting lineups and playing matchups and that sort of thing so it i i think they'll roll with varland if, if he gets the opportunity and is performing well that would be my worry uh if i was a desclafani fan and my hope if i was drafting drafting louis varland yeah it seemed uh i was pretty happy to grab to jump varland up a couple rounds in my glarf draft uh, so I think that's the only place I have any exposure to him yet. But I, I just remember when Descalfani was traded, obviously, you know, twice, but from Seattle to Minnesota. And that's all anybody could think about was why would you block Louis Varlin? Like you already have Louis Varlin at home. Why, why throws, you know, the elder version of Louis Varlin in, in your rotation. Um, and when they announced that like, yeah, Descalfani will be the first choice. You're like, just do the whole big eye roll. But uh you know, you do get to a point where maybe you st- you have to start trusting the twins at some point. Uh, to your point, Kevin, uh, Joe, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna skip you on that one because I think you might talk a little bit further, um, a little bit about you know this situation a little bit later on in the podcast. So with that, we're gonna round out our news and notes, and we'll move on to the main crutch of the episode, where we are going to be talking about. The drafting specifically two categories. Today we're talking about our counting, our pitching counting categories, your wins, your strikeouts. And of course, uh, I am Adam Howe, joined by Kevin Hastings, and we are lucky to have Joe Orico of Sports Ethos to join us to talk about this. But before we do, uh, Joe, like I like to do in the middle of a show, instead of waiting until the end, remind everybody who you are and what you do and where you do it. Yeah, that's smart. I should start doing that on my show because by the end, who knows how many people are still sticking around all the way. (laughs) Uh, But you can check me out over on Twitter at JoeOrico99. I host the Fantasy MLB Today podcast. And you can check out all of my written work and everything in our draft guide at sportsethos.com. Perfect, perfect. So at 500, you just had... Yeah, we did. We did show 500 uh, a few weeks ago with pitcherless own Nick Pollock and Eno Saris. It was a fantastic fantastic episode of the show and i said it out on twitter today if you're going to listen to one episode that i do this year or maybe even ever um go <laughs> listen to that one with Eno and nick it was a fantastic show and i should say here in the middle i should have said it off the top but congratulations to both of you but adam in particular on the fswa award uh for podcast of the year i know you run the podcast network here so big kudos to you guys because there's uh some heavy hitters in that category it's a big one to win that was and Nick said this on on the last uh, on the corner as well. Like that was a very surprising one. Uh, I didn't mean I wasn't. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to kind of pay attention to it happening live. And I went back into our Discord and Nick had tagged me. And he's like, "You should be listening to Sirius right now." And that was like two and a half hours prior. And I'm like, "Oh <laughs> man!" Uh, so I finally got to that. But I mean, we're extremely lucky that you know you got to remember. And Nick said this on on the corner. Uh, not that we cheat, that's what he said, but I won't say that. Uh, but we do have like 13, 14 shows that all feed into the same feed. So we have a lot of great talent that are putting out really quality stuff on the regular, not even once a day, but usually it's like two or three times a day in season. Uh, so I want to give a shout out to every single creator, every single host that we have that we're lucky enough to work with. Um, on the podcast so thank you for that shout out joe um but yeah by all means it's this is 
it, it is not like I put it in my Twitter bio. Sure. But like everybody should, honestly, <laughs> uh, Kevin, you should be adding that to your Twitter bio if that's your thing. Uh, but yeah, we have if a I lot of people in wins. It's going in there. There you go. There you go. Walmart plus members save on meeting up with friends. Save on having them over for dinner with free delivery with no hidden fees or markups. That's groceries plus napkins plus that vegetable chopper to make things a bit easier. Plus, members save on gas to go meet them in their neck of the woods. Plus, when you're ready for the ultimate sign of friendship, start a show together with your included Paramount Plus subscription. Walmart Plus members save on this plus so much more. Start a 30-day free trial at walmartplus.com. Paramount Plus, a central plan only. Separate registration required. See Walmart Plus terms and conditions. Luxury is meant to be livable. Discover the new leather collection at Ashley with premium quality leather sofas, recliners, and more, all built to last. No matter how many spills, scuffs, or pet-related mishaps come its way, the leather collection at Ashley is made with the durability you need for the whole family. Shop the new leather collection at Ashley and find chairs starting at $499.99 and sofas at $599.99. Ashley, for the love of home. As a person with a very deep voice, I'm hired all the time for advertising campaigns. But a deep voice doesn't sell B2B. And advertising on the wrong platform doesn't sell B2B either. That's why if you're a B2B marketer, you should use LinkedIn ads. LinkedIn has the targeting capabilities to help you reach the world's largest professional audience. That's right. Over 70 million decision makers all in one place. All the big wigs, then medium wigs. Also small wigs who are on the path to becoming big wigs. Okay, that's enough about Wix. LinkedIn ads allows you to focus on getting your B2B message to the right people. So, does that mean you should use ads on LinkedIn instead of hiring me, the man with the deepest voice in the world? Yes. Yes, it does. Get started today and see why LinkedIn is the place to be to be. We'll even give you a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. All right, well, let's talk about some chasing wins, Kevin. I'll let you lead it off here. Uh, let's start with wins as we are drafting for these counting categories on the pitching side. Um, ver- going into 2024 drafts, have you been thinking about wins differently than you were in 2023 from your rec- election, or is it just the same old strategy? Like these, it's just wins are what they are, and you got to figure it out. I wouldn't say differently than 2023. Uh, I think we knew a year ago that that the uh, environment was was what it was going to be and what it has been, and so I think it's more trying to improve upon what we I was already trying to do in 2023, which is in terms of volume. Uh, really paying attention to this isn't always the case, you know, but when it comes down and guys are close. Which one's on the team that's going to win more games, right? No. They're, they're all the Rob Silver did an amazing uh, presentation on this two years ago in Arizona, and then wrote an article about it for this year's uh, FTN uh, Fantasy Guide, I believe. And uh, th- there's there's certain things that you can look for, right? Uh, innings per start, right? You can't get a win as a starter if you don't go five innings. It's not possible. So, you know, we want a guy averaging the, the innings per start. Good team was one's one of the biggest ones that he listed. And when we start looking at players or pitchers, starting pitchers with double digit wins, right, these are the things that they have in common. Good teams, innings pitch per outing, these types of things. So what I'm trying to do, not necessarily taking my first couple of starters earlier in drafts but definitely the next few in general improving the quality of the starting pitching i'm drafting drafting guys that pitch more innings per start drafting guys on better teams in general when they're close i i'm not going to use those for a, a mediocre pitcher versus uh, a, 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 an all-star. But th- those are the types of things I'm looking for. And so in general, I've kind of moved up my, um, my, my 
pitching draft positions overall, not necessarily at the top. In TGFBI, I did take Spencer Strider in the first round. That's my first share, and I believe that's the first time this season I took a starting pitcher in the first round. Uh, maybe there was one other time, but I think that was the first time. But overall, I'm moving the entire pitching pool up a little bit. Yeah, that tends to happen in general, right? Um, especially in NFBC drafts. As March moves along, we start seeing, especially in like the main events that all happen at the end of the month, uh, pitching just moves up as a as a whole um and so that's not too surprising if you can if you can take advantage of that early when pitching hasn't quite moved up in general you can have the pick of the litter like you the pick that you actually want instead of just saying hey i'm going to take a pitcher no i'm going to take the pitcher i want um in the first or second or third rounds for that matter uh joe when you are pitching or when you're drafting pitchers think again i'm sticking with wins of the category specifically here um how much are you weighing the possibility of wins as like a tiebreaker between two or three guys? Like how important is it for them to be on a quote winning team versus a not so, you know, a team you don't think is going to win a lot of games. If the team's not going to win a lot of games, typically no matter how good the pitcher is, they're also not going to win a lot of games. Maybe it's not even the team. Maybe it's their bullpen behind them that can't hold on to a lead. So again, doesn't matter how many, how good that pitcher is if they're not going to hold on to that lead and then not be able to get that win. Uh, how how much is that weighing on your strategy when you are you've got two or three pitchers? At a, you know you're going to pick a pitcher, the, but the wins if you put it factor. How big of a factor? I think they play a pretty big factor. You guys put it, I mean, perfectly. Kevin, um, referencing what Rob Silver said in Arizona a couple of years ago, and then wrote about this year. Um, it, it's really important to target the guys who are on the good teams. It's I know it sounds like it's the most surface level analysis that you could possibly imagine, but it's true. Um, the pitchers who pitch on the good teams are going to get the wins, and the volume guys are going to get more of them. It's it's you know it's just one of those things like the guys who get more strikeouts are better pitchers. It's it's like yeah no no duh, but it's just the way that things um, work out. So TGFBI for me, I started off with Logan Webb. He was my first starting pitcher. He's not on a great team, but he's going to throw a lot of innings to the point where it kind of does offset that. So the team context is important, but I think the innings also really factor into it for me. Uh, Logan Webb and Max Freed were the first two pitchers I took in TGFBI. So I've got between them. I mean, there's more risk with Freed, but you know, good team context. I think between them, you're looking at at least 300 innings. So I, those two things are very, very important to me, and they are the tiebreakers. They're not necessarily, you know, this guy pitches for the Astros and this guy pitches for any other team, so therefore I'm taking the Astros guy. There needs to be more to your analysis, but it does function as a really good tiebreaker if you're very close on two guys or you have them projected for the same ERA and the same whip, then that is a good way to to differentiate between them, I think. I think, yeah, the the innings plays a big role. And I think, Kevin, I'm going to echo what you said. It's, it's not so much the innings that they get at the end of the year. It's the innings they get per start. So even if you have somebody like Max Fried, who you may be concerned that he doesn't end the year healthy, um, when he is healthy, more than likely, they're not babying him, you know, per per start or per game. Um, they're still going to let him go five, six, seven, you know, you know, seven innings unless he gets hurt in that start. Right. So that per inning basis plays a big role. Now, if you have somebody a little bit younger or somebody you're just worried about injuries and the team is worried about injuries and they're going to kind of let them start, but you don't expect them to be going, you know, a full five innings, but you don't, but that, that, and they're doing that, the team is doing that in such a way where maybe he, they still start all year. They still, maybe they make 30 plus starts um, in that manner and they still rack up 140, 150 innings in that way. Great. That's a lot of innings, but if it's, you know, 150 innings over the course of 30, 32 starts, more than likely they're not walking in themselves into opportunities where they're going to walk away with the win based on the innings per start too. So uh, the, I think that situation is worth echoing, um, but let's talk about the other elephant in the room here. And that's strikeouts. Um, I think personally, strikeouts is what when people say they're trying to stream they are chasing wins but ultimately they're also their volume their way into the strikeout category as well at the risk of ratios at the risk you know of you know hurting other other categories sure 
But we talk about it like every episode, Kevin, we talk about who are the two star pitchers that we're going to be. There are other there are a plethora of articles across different <laughs> platforms talking about who the two star pitchers are it's because we want to volume our way into those counting categories, namely strikeouts. So how you know how important is it to get that volume with your first couple draft picks? Um, so that you may be ha- you may be able to not stream as often, thus not hurting those those ratios in the process. Um, and I know you talked about this when we did our ratios. It's like, yeah, sure, you can stream somebody and they can give you a seven point two ERA and you'll take that all day. May I, I counter? I'm like, I'll take that one day. I, I'm not going to take that all every day. Uh, right. But at the same time, I get what you're saying. But like, how important is it to maybe? Go the other way with that and get those strikeouts in the draft rather than relying on the streaming uh, streaming uh, situation throughout the season. Oh, it's it's one of the reasons I have completely flip flopped over the past few years on my reliever drafting. Yeah, a, a couple of top elite closers. Not only does that give you comfort as long as they stay healthy, keep their role. All those caveats, of course, but not only does it mean you're not chasing saves in fab and you don't have to worry about paying attention as closely to who may be the next up and coming relief guys, but these guys probably get you close to, if not a hundred strikeouts, right? And lower ratios. So they help here as well they're also going to get us a few wins going back to the previous conversation so that's one of the reasons i've really come around on drafting elite closers is because not only is it my save category and ratios but they get wins and strikeouts at a much higher rate than the the lesser relievers as well so that's that's probably the the biggest thing for me um when it comes to streaming Typically for me, I'm looking for wins. That That's my focal point when I'm streaming a starting pitcher in a good matchup or even a two-start pitcher. I'm looking at what I feel like are good matchups uh, that are going to lead to a good potential for a win. And I'd be absolutely ecstatic if, if you ever get that second one out of a a, a to start pitcher that's available on the waiver wire, but um, strikeouts. I feel like I can get the same amount of strikeouts, especially from a one start pitcher in a good matchup with a good reliever. If he gets in there a third game that week, and we talk about that all season long too. So it's really the wins I'm concentrating on when it's strikeouts. That's what I'm looking more towards in my draft. Joe, I'm gonna I'm gonna lead you with this question, Kevin. I'll I'll get your take on it as well. But because you just said, Kevin, that you just drafted uh, Spencer Strider in the first round of your TGFBI, I also did with the sixth overall pick in my draft. My first exposure to Strider this year as well. Uh, the second time in my nine drafts that I've completed so far that I've picked the starter in the first round, I did end up with Garrett Cole in like the, with the like 11 or 12th pick at some point and one draft. I don't even remember. It's, it's all kind of meshes together at this point, especially when you start drafting in October uh, and you do at least one a month. It it just, yeah, it is what it is. Um, And multiple going now. Now we no Kevin, you picked him at the nine spot. If I believe um, Strider. And he, so he dropped there, but we've seen him go. Like I said, I picked him at six overall. We've seen him, I think, in TGFBI go as high as four, or three, three or four at one in one draft. There's an uh, there's been an argument that Strider could very very well be the number two player off the board, especially. I think in Mains, we'll in see Mains him going be, too. Yeah, so, Joe, do you think that should be the you know that should be a consideration? Um, and and if this Acuna injury is actually anything to you know write home about, maybe he's the one. Um, because of the possibility of wins and, you know, wins being on Atlanta and then the strikeouts are, you know, just so far ahead of so the combination of those two things. Does he make it as a consideration for the number two pick in your eyes? So you stole my punchline. I was going to say he's going one Oh one. If this Acuna news keeps up <laughs> and those drafts that were happening tonight 
uh, on the we're recording on Friday, and I wonder on live Friday NFBC drafts if Acuna fell, if he fell to the two or the three, and maybe it'd probably be Witt that gets pushed up, but maybe maybe you see Strider as a one zero one in a draft or two come a, you know a live Vegas main event. Maybe if Acuna's, we still don't know for sure. Then I could see it happening. Should you do it? I'm probably Spencer Strider's like maybe his biggest fan out there. I have him projected as the triple crown winner, not just in the National League, but across all of Major League Baseball. But I still don't know that I could take him ahead of Witt and ahead of Rodriguez because as much as I do love Strider and he does set you way ahead, I can take Gosman, Lopez, Wheeler, Burns, Castillo in the second round even, and I'm making up like 80% of that or so. I'm not going to be able to do that with Bobby Witt or with Julio Rodriguez, not as easily in my opinion, um, especially if Bobby Witt, per- like these guys, another thing is they're only like two years in. They could get better. Bobby Witt was 30-50. What if it's 35-56 or something like that this year? There could be a whole other level. I don't know if we're going to see Strider get necessarily better. Maybe he can. Um, you see Alex Fast tweeting about these two new pitches he's got, and I think people are going to start to go crazy. But um, to answer your question, the long-winded answer that I'm giving is I don't, think i would take him at number two but it's gonna happen it it will happen people are uh, people love spencer strider and if this if this change up in curveball stick maybe it'll be worth it it wouldn't be the craziest thing but i couldn't do it personally i mean he's been picked i mean again in the last month on nfbc he hasn't been pick of two uh so i don't know which drafts that happened in but i'm more interested as you as you mentioned if like the draft that's happening right now uh on nfbc if there's a possibility he went first and we'll find out as soon as that closes and we can update our ADP and see if his min changes. I'm venturing to guess it didn't, but I mean, you, you, with these like news that happen in this nebulous region where you don't know what's going on, Acuna hurt, not going to get an MRI. They're not worried about it. It's his knee. Why not? I, I'm going to echo Sarah Sanchez who pointed as like, why not just get the MRI? <laughs> Just just get the MRI. What, does it hurt to get an MRI? I've never had an MRI, uh, but I, I don't venture to guess that it is painful. I think the answer to that is this is absolutely nothing. And if it wasn't Ronald Acuna Jr., even if it was Bobby Witt or Julio Rodriguez, we may not have even heard about it. Spring Maybe. training just started. These guys are sore. <laughs> it's his knee that's a little sore, and that's what he had the surgery on. So we're freaking out. It's absolutely nothing. He has been playing a lot in the offseason, though. It's not like he's coming in with yeah. you know five month layoff, though. He has been playing a little bit. That's so true. I'm I'm not sure. I'm not going to read much into it, but it's the same knee that was repaired surgically. So it's not my favorite thing to hear. I'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Joe, you're drafting right now. Are you picking him one one? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. (laughs) I think we all are, but Kevin pause for a second, but yeah, I couldn't do it. I'd feel so foolish to not do it and then have him repeat again. (laughs) Yeah. I like the uh, dramatic effect that you added to that. That's, that's what's crazy. I'm getting a little off track, but, but Joe kind of brought it up a couple of minutes ago. Acuna's X stats or most of them are better than what he did last year. Yeah. Bobby Witt Jr. was horrible for the two first two months of the season. Fans with Bobby Witt Jr. jerseys on at the stadium for, were clamoring for him to get sent to AAA to figure things out, right? Julio had had slow periods. All of these guys could actually be better than they were last season. That is just insane for me to even think about. All right, let's stay on track. Let's end it here uh, with this last question so we can uh, kind of wrap up the wins and Ks conversation. Uh Joe, we talked a little bit about you know streaming. Um, I asked Kevin about his streaming tactics. But if you are streaming and you're streaming for strikeouts, how granular are you getting when you're trying to predict the amount of strikeouts that a pitcher is going to get? Um, are you looking at the matchups? Are you looking at the lineups that they're placing against? Or is it all skill based on the pitcher itself? Like, How do you mash up those two, you know, the scouting reports, if you will, your own personal scouting reports? So I come at it as a DFS player as well. I play a lot of DFS during the season. So I have a subscription to Stochastic and a couple of different places. And I look at Sims. I look at a bunch of different simulations. And you're never going to get it's never going to be perfect. But it does give you a pretty good idea in terms of setting your lineups. And then again, that does translate 
kind of perfectly over into streaming options. Um, so <clears throat> some of those lower priced guys for DFS who are going to be on 25% of rosters or fewer uh, are, are going to be pretty interesting. Now, I don't drive myself crazy over it if I need six strikeouts and the guy's projected for five and it's a really good matchup. I'm not going to you know set a hard line that I'm not going to pick him up and vice versa. Like it's not... I'm not relying 100% on projections ever. There's always going to be a gut feel. It's why even in my own projections, I have certain players ranked a little bit higher than another player, um, but their projections are actually a little bit worse, and that's just the gut feel part of it. So I'll see somebody projected for 7Ks. I don't like what I'm seeing, and I think it'll be fewer, so I won't bite at it. But it, it does it does play a role for sure. Um, I like Kevin mentioned it earlier. A, a big part of streaming for me is the is the opponent, is the matchup because the win <clears throat> the win is almost always the thing that we're going to go to first. But maybe we should start to look at everything a little bit more because I think we automatically see a team is going into Oakland. Pitchers an automatic stream. Maybe there should be a little bit more to that. Uh, to your point, you got me kind of thinking there because we just automatically say everybody pitching in Oakland is a stream. Maybe we should dig a little bit deeper there because I know that I've been guilty of that. That leads to another question. I, I appreciate the fact that you're you're taking this from a DFS standpoint, and I totally get how that translates, uh, especially into Fab and as you're streaming your pitchers. Kevin, what other tools are you using that you might recommend, uh, especially when you are looking at pitching on a mm-hmm. weekly Fab basis? Uh, I think most of our listeners, if not all of them, uh, know of the the. Um, oh goodness! Now I'm drawing a blank. Raz, Raz, <laughs> Razball, Player Raider. I think it, it, most everybody at, at least knows of that. It's, it's a great option. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm more interested in the opponent, and what I am going to do. Not plan to do, not hope to do. I am going to do this. I'm talking it into existence. Going deeper into this this season. It's not okay. The Rockies are on the road and they're bad. So I'm gonna I'm gonna send Jose Quintana out there against him. I'm gonna look at how they perform against the types of pitches he typically throws not just you know i think a lot of us go to handedness in this situation and then that's about it you know uh the giants aren't good at home versus lefties that that's kind of where it stops for a lot of us um but there's so much more you know the 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 repertoire of the pitcher and how the lineup in general of the opponent typically performs against those types of pitches and and, and that type of thing. Uh, I think that can be very valuable. I think there are people doing it, and I think the people doing it are very successful. So it, it's time to add that to, to our game. Yeah, I mean, I've got to be a company man, of course, and throw out the fact that you have our PLV weekly projections that are going, yes. Nick tells me they're going to come out on Fridays instead of Sundays um, and then get updated throughout the weekend. Uh, so you best believe that we will be using that tool uh, um, in prep for our pod as well as we re- typically record on Saturday nights um, in season. Um, but yeah, I mean, that PLV it was built to take into account not only the pitches that are thrown, but also the opponent and how they they take into account those pitches and how they perform against those pitches in a general basis. So um, I definitely can't shout that out enough uh, as a as of course. A there's tool. The, the the ballpark, right? We always talk about sure. that, and like Eno's been talking a lot recently about there actually being ballpark factors actually having a big effect on strikeouts. For hitters and therefore the pitcher so certain ballparks are better strikeout ballparks i'm sure it has to do with the batter's eye and their view and and that type of thing but the, the, there there's so much we can add to this analysis and I, I i am going to add as much of it as i can this season something i didn't put on here but it just came to my mind i guess both of you guys joe I'll start with you um we see offense you know we see offense in general kind of take a spike in the summertime, obviously warmer weather across the country, um, balls flying a little bit more, not so much at the beginning of the season in most stadiums, especially those stadiums on the Northern half of the country. Um, you know, how much weight should we put into streaming and kind of bulking up our counting pitching stats in April rather than waiting until 
August and September to make up ground, knowing that they might be more plentiful options, you know, on the wire and and what have you. Have you given that any thought? I think it's something that we talk about every year and is a very smart idea that we should be implementing more. And then the season starts and we throw our plans out the window and somebody gets called up in the first week and it's $600 bids and we're just kind of, you know, freehanding it for the rest of the season after that. <laughs> so I think it, it makes a lot of sense and it's something that I'm going to try it and do. Um, but if the first few weeks of the season, you know, let's say holiday Langford don't start the year with their clubs and those guys get called up and we're spending a lot of money. It changes your whole plan for the year. I, I, I think you should concentrate more of your money towards early season bids, whether it's streamers or otherwise, because that's when you're going to have more of the value and you're going to have more time to actually benefit from these players you're picking up. So the weather does play a factor, but I think just overall, yes, like you should be using more of your, your streaming or your, your fab money in april and in may before you know the heat of the summer really does kick in yeah and kevin i mean also something to consider is the fact that especially in the first two three maybe you know two or three weeks in april pitchers aren't you know they say they're ramped up and ready to go for open day but they're not at mid-season form so these starters aren't going deep into games they're not always going five innings six innings and getting that volume um is there any aspect of that factor or does that factor into your decision making when it comes again to streaming or to putting in more relievers into your early in your early lineups uh, rather than, you know, those mid tier uh, starters? Yeah, absolutely. And just to touch on uh, the, the time of year really quick when that type of thing, the Chicago Cubs always come to mind for me. Right. Early in the year, it seems like the wind's blowing in at Wrigley. And I think most of us have the perception of Wrigley being a great hitter's park when the wind's blowing out. It is when the wind's blowing out, but it's a great pitcher's park when the wind is blowing in. I think that's a great example. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I agree with, with everything Joe said. And I, when it, when it comes to, the the streaming for strikeouts uh like i said typically that's gonna be a, a high leverage reliever for me uh but th there there are starters and it i i hate to say it's a case-by-case -case basis because we can say that about anything because it is true of anything but it, it really depends on well, how how are how are my ratios already doing for my team as a whole? Can I take a hit if he does get blown up? You know, these types of things. My The rest of my own fantasy roster affects this too. And then the players and who else is available that week. Um, the, there's so much that goes into this that I try. As, as I just got done telling you I'm going to do more analysis for these situations in 2024 than I have done in the past. At the same time, I am going to do that. But at the same time, we want to keep our process as simple as possible at, as well. We don't want to start looking at so many things that we forget to look at, oh, this is actually Spencer Strider starting today, right? That extreme example that we're not going to ever come across, but there, there's some things that that are simple and we just don't want to forget to take a look at as well. Um, it, it's also to do with, with your comfort level. Are you going to sit down and watch every game that all of your starters pitch this week and sweat out every inning they're throwing? If the, if you are one of those fantasy players, streaming pitchers probably isn't for you. Uh, you'll you'll have all gray hair and then no hair by the end of the season, uh, and maybe that's been my problem. But uh, yeah, there, there's just so much that goes into this, and there's so many different things to take a look at. But at the same time, uh, you know, don't forget to. In, in general, we're, we're using these as tiebreakers or as streamers throughout the year. In general, we're going to play the guy we think is a better pitcher, usually. But uh, then, then we start breaking all these other things down. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a, uh, if nothing else, it's just a fun process. <laughs> it's yeah, just to kind of dive into we do this. It. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's true. Um, all right. Well, let's talk about some specific players now, guys, that. Walmart Plus members save on meeting up with friends. 
Save on having them over for dinner with free delivery with no hidden fees or markups. That's groceries plus napkins plus that vegetable chopper to make things a bit easier. Plus, members save on gas to go meet them in their neck of the woods. Plus, when you're ready for the ultimate sign of friendship, start a show together with your included Paramount Plus subscription. Walmart Plus members save on this plus so much more. Start a 30-day free trial at walmartplus.com. Paramount Plus, a central plan only. Separate registration required. See Walmart Plus terms and conditions. Luxury is meant to be livable. Discover the new leather collection at Ashley with premium quality leather sofas, recliners, and more, all built to last. No matter how many spills, scuffs, or pet-related mishaps come its way, the leather collection at Ashley is made with the durability you need for the whole family. Shop the new leather collection at Ashley and find chairs starting at $499.99 and sofas at $599.99. Ashley, for the love of home. As a person with a very deep voice, I'm hired all the time for advertising campaigns. But a deep voice doesn't sell B2B. And advertising on the wrong platform doesn't sell B2B either. That's why if you're a B2B marketer, you should use LinkedIn ads. LinkedIn has the targeting capabilities to help you reach the world's largest professional audience. That's right, over 70 million decision makers all in one place. All the big wigs, then medium wigs, also small wigs who are on the path to becoming big wigs. Okay, that's enough about wigs. LinkedIn ads allows you to focus on getting your B2B message to the right people. So, does that mean you should use ads on LinkedIn instead of hiring me, the man with the deepest voice in the world? Yes. Yes, it does. Get started today and see why LinkedIn is the place to be to be. We'll even give you a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. We tend to do this with these with these episodes. We're looking at players that can help in these categories at the end of your drafts. And of course, we we focus this at the end of a 12 team draft. This is your typical 30 round 12 team draft. So uh, we're I formatted this a little differently than we have done where you guys just get to pick players uh, willy nilly and or do a straight ask game. I molded the two together in this format. So we are going to play ask, but I'm going to allow you to choose the players rather than give you set uh, set players. I did put some parameters for each category. So as a reminder, ask stands for avoid stream keep. Uh, each one of you is going to pick a pitcher. Again, we're keeping wins and strikeouts in mind with these pitchers specifically. We're not worried about ratios in this in this this experiment um, or this exercise uh, just wins and just strike and strikeouts. So you got to pick a guy that you're going to avoid this avoid player. We'll get to in a little bit. They had to have had an ADP in online championships so far this year between 250 and 350. So not maybe probably not the final round, um, but they're going a little higher. Basically these are guys you think are going a little higher you're not really into them. You have to avoid them. AK, you can't draft them. You couldn't pick them up all season if they became available. Um, and they had to have been drafted in 100% of online championships thus far. Your stream, your S in this, uh, these are players that you can stream. You can pick up at the end of your draft with the expectation they might not be on your roster in a couple of weeks. You might stream them again um, off the wire later on, et cetera, et cetera. Your rules on that is that that player has to have an ADP post 325 in online championships and drafted in less than 75% of your OC. So these guys are going to be readily available at the very end of your 12 team drafts. And then your keeps, which is what we're going to start here with. Um, the rules for this one is that they must have an ADP post 300. It doesn't matter how many how many of these drafts they've been drafted in, but their ADP has to have been post 300 in the online championships. Uh, Kevin, I'm going to have you start us off here. Uh, again, this is your keep um, of your three that you get to choose. Uh, ADP post 300. Who you got? Yeah, I, I I think I am covering the the couple of things I talked about earlier um with john gray good team good lineup gonna win a lot of games uh typically pitches at, at least 
fairly deep into games. Uh, goes the five to six. He doesn't go a lot deeper than that typically, but but he does average uh, well over. Uh, five innings per start and his performance while i i think some probably found uh 2023 disappointing i know the all those years in colorado we just dreamed about how awesome john gray will be when he gets out of colorado and that hasn't happened but he has been really good and i you know, he he only had nine wins last season, and that's what he's projected for this season. Uh, he had 29 starts. I would expect that to hit double digits if he gets to that number of starts again. Uh, ERA a little over four. Um, we, we saw him have kind of an up and down season. We've also see him, seen him perform better than that in the past. It was kind of a down season. Uh, you know, his XCRA and FIP were both much better in 21 and 22 than 23. Um, I, I, I see him bouncing back a little bit and projections seem to agree a little bit, except in, in ERA. You know, they're giving him right about a strikeout and inning. Love that for a guy we're getting post 300 in drafts. We'll take that every day. Good team. So we should get some wins there. Um, the projection systems aren't really big on his ratios. However, with the ERA well over four and up uh, approaching that one three range for whip, those are a bit concerning. I like John Gray. I think he's going to give us double digit wins i think he's going to give us a strikeout per inning and i think he can get back to that 21 and 22 uh performing a little bit better in the ratio categories as well for a guy i'm drafting after pick 300 i'm willing to take that chance if the ratios start blowing me up earlier in the year i'll have to cut bait you can't though because this is your keep so them uh-huh. the rules kevin <laughs> i don't have to start him you, you do it's a gladiator come on you know the rules <laughs> <laughs> I've drafted John Gray in Gladiator. I only did one Gladiator this season. I'm not sure if I got him or not. I might have. I would draft him in a Gladiator. There, there we go. There we go. Cole, uh, Cole to the fire, uh, feet to the fire, if you will. Um, all right, Joe, you're looking at a pitcher ADP post 300 in the online championships that have completed so far that you've got to keep all year round. You have to start them all year round. Uh, who fits the bill for you? I've gone with Louis Varland. Um, you politely avoided talking about him earlier because we're going to get into him here so this whole anthony di sclafani thing was really weird you guys mentioned it why did they feel the need to bring him in and then give him this rotation spot like i i don't understand it they had louis varland and louis varland was really good as a hybrid reliever and starter last year and if you look at what he did in the minor leagues as well combined you're looking at almost 150 innings so we have the volume standpoint taken care of he can handle a big workload you're looking at a very good strikeout rate of 25%, 19% strikeout minus walk rate, really good number. His Sierra was 377. The supporting metrics are really good. He's on the best team in the division. Um, now, he may be a touch risky for a gladiator, but even before this, you know, it's the Sclafani thing, because I don't think projection systems have, have properly accounted for this news yet. He's still projected for 122 innings. 18 starts and 17 relief appearances, according to ATC. That'll get a boost up with the Scalfani starting the year down. So what are we talking, 140 innings or so of a guy with an ADP of 317? I, I really like Louis Varlin this year. Again, maybe he's a little risky for a gladiator because we don't know 100%. But considering the price, it's one of your last two or three rounds. It's really not going to hurt you so much um either way and I, I think that price will go up by the time people are hearing this it's probably going to be higher than 317 he'll likely jump up which adam i know you're not hoping for but that price is going to rise that price is going to go up i'm just hoping that my at the draft i'm in now tgfbi will have moved along fast enough by the time this show goes live uh and then your comments <laughs> won't matter as much uh, but maybe maybe i'll have to jump them up just for funsies as we've have we seen a select few players in tgfbi uh go at some interesting adps compared to what we've been seeing in other leagues as well uh you know and most of that is driven just by nick pollock and cole reagan's uh and uh, kevin and i aren't aren't hurting aren't hurting that as well also drafting him in the fifth round uh 
But this is not a podcast where we're talking about Cole Reagans. Unfortunately, we are still talking about guys that you can get with your final few picks in a 12 team or draft again, we'll look post 300 post 325 ADP range. Um, so Joe, we'll, uh, we'll move on to our streaming option here in the ask uh, game. This is the S here rules of this player. They had to have had an ADP of po- post 325 in the online championships and drafted in less than 75% of those completed drafts. Uh, this is a guy you can pick with your last couple of, one or two picks in a draft and then maybe you don't expect to keep them on your roster maybe they sit and they become a team streamer regardless this is a guy that's going to be in and out of your lineup whether you're spending fab on him or they are a team streamer you uh you have a little bit more flexibility here uh who you got so i went with aaron ashby he's been taken and i narrowed it down to february online championships he's been taken in 17 out of 41 so he's Not somebody that's even being drafted all over the place. And I understand why he didn't pitch at all last year, but he's healthy now. I don't know that he's guaranteed a rotation spot necessarily, but I think it does make sense considering what the Brewers are dealing with. He's not currently listed on roster resource if you do look at the rotation. Hard to see him not getting a shot, though, considering the talent level there. I know the results. If you just look at ERA for his career, it's 447, but... It's a 324 XFIP. You're looking at a 27% strikeout rate. There's some really nice stuff below the surface there. And I think considering the specifications that I don't have to keep them on my roster all year, use a last round pick, last two rounds, there will be weeks, assuming he's healthy, which might be a big assumption, where he'll be a great streamer who is going to be somebody that will be able to give you strikeouts. Wins are always a little tricky, but in the right matchup, considering he's in, I don't know, are they one of the better teams in the division anymore? Middle of the pack team in the division. Um, I think that you'll be able to get a good combination of strikeouts and wins from Aaron Ashby in the right circumstances. And of course, assuming health, which not a guaranteed thing at this point. Man, I mean, Kevin, you know my thoughts on Ashby in general. I don't have a whole lot of exposure to him this year. I have grabbed him in a couple of, you know, our listener leagues because of the fab aspect, because, um, you know, I feel like you're going to know where he he sits on opening day, right? You're going to know what his role is going to be. You're going to know if he's healthy. You're going to know. So you can make that decision, you know, based on what you actually do know right away. Uh, with that being said, um, I just, you know, I'm just, if he can, if the, if the Brewers don't need to give him a starting spot, if they can just give him a follower spot and he can go three innings, like, he doesn't even need to go four. If Aaron Ashby can go three innings, coming in in the second or third inning like he can get wins and he can get just as many strikeouts knowing that he's going to be taken out in three three innings that he would if he was starting a six inning game um and you know he had to stretch himself out a little bit more that's my ideal scenario for Aaron Ashby uh I don't know that the Brewers are going to do that with him but to your point Joe I don't think he's guaranteed a starting spot in the rotation by any stretch of the imagination right now um but uh, you know, we'll we'll see. I don't, Kevin. I, th- I don't think your boy Way Miley is gonna necessarily be ready as well. I think he hit some roadblocks uh, or some speed bumps along the way as well. Something we didn't talk about in the news section, but something to monitor um, for sure. Uh, Kevin Streamer in this category, play by the rules. Uh, who you got? I am playing by the rules, I but. Know. I'm not going to talk about him a whole lot because we talked about him a few weeks ago when when Kyle Bland was here and we were talking PLV projections. Uh, JP Sears, uh, he, he's going after 325. Uh, like Joe, I pulled up uh, February online championships and and that's what I was using here. Uh, so he, he does meet the the less than seventy five percent as well, I believe. Uh, but the the thing about J.P. Sears, um, I think I think most people are in agreement on what they expect him personally to do or close to it. You know, we're all looking at projections. Most of us are looking at many of the same projections and we're looking, but we're talking wins. And on Oakland, how many wins is he going to get? Well, PLV projections and they've, had an update since we talked about him with Kyle Bland since he joined us, and uh, but that still the same for for uh, 
J.P. Sears still ranked in the about the same spot according to the projections, and still projected for twelve wins. I still have a bit of an issue with that. However, the projection systems on Fangraphs all have him for eight to nine. Right? They all have him just under double digits. All I want to see is him get to that double digits. You know, there were less than sixty pitchers in all of baseball last year that got to double digit wins. If you're getting a guy this late that gets there uh, with, you know, the ballparks for him, uh, he, he's, he's going to pitch some innings. The only box we're not checking here is, is the team context, the good team. Uh, but if he can overcome that and, and snag some wins and, and hit that double digits, then, then I'm game. Walmart Plus members save on meeting up with friends. Save on having them over for dinner with free delivery with no hidden fees or markups. That's groceries plus napkins plus that vegetable chopper to make things a bit easier. Plus, members save on gas to go meet them in their neck of the woods. Plus, when you're ready for the ultimate sign of friendship, start a show together with your included Paramount Plus subscription. Walmart Plus members save on this plus so much more. Start a 30-day free trial at walmartplus.com. Paramount Plus, a central plan only. Separate registration required. See Walmart Plus terms and conditions. Luxury is meant to be livable. Discover the new leather collection at Ashley with premium quality leather sofas, recliners, and more, all built to last. No matter how many spills, scuffs, or pet-related mishaps come its way, the leather collection at Ashley is made with the durability you need for the whole family. Shop the new leather collection at Ashley and find chairs starting at $499.99 and sofas at $599.99. Ashley, for the love of home. As a person with a very deep voice, I'm hired all the time for advertising campaigns. But a deep voice doesn't sell B2B. And advertising on the wrong platform doesn't sell B2B either. That's why if you're a B2B marketer, you should use LinkedIn ads. LinkedIn has the targeting capabilities to help you reach the world's largest professional audience. That's right. Over 70 million decision makers all in one place. All the big wigs, then medium wigs. Also small wigs who are on the path to becoming big wigs. Okay, that's enough about Wix. LinkedIn ads allows you to focus on getting your B2B message to the right people. So, does that mean you should use ads on LinkedIn instead of hiring me, the man with the deepest voice in the world? Yes. Yes, it does. Get started today and see why LinkedIn is the place to be to be. We'll even give you a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. Uh, one other guy I would like to bring up quickly because we talked about JP Sears not too long ago. Uh, Frankie Montas, I believe, me- meets your uh, qualifications for the game today. Uh, I, like everybody, a little leery of pitching in Great America's Small Park, but it's not like Co- Coors Field where your pitches don't move. It's just a small ballpark. So, uh, we have seen pitchers have success pitching at, in Cincinnati as their home ballpark. And uh, Frankie Montas, one of the, we don't take a whole lot into spring. We get we get more information now out of spring training games than we've ever got in the past. I still don't want to overreact to any of it, but him looking good in his, his outing, uh, I believe it was on Thursday of this week, as we're recording on Friday. Um, just he. He looks perfectly healthy. That's what I took out of it. And for that reason, he, he's somebody I'm becoming more and more interested as uh, spring moves along. Yeah, go back to J.P. Sears. I mean, they go back to your earlier point, Kevin. The innings per start matter a lot as well to get to those double-digit wins, right? Uh, last year, going 172 in a third innings um, in 32 starts, that averages out to about five and a third. Uh, so you've got the ability on average to be going over the five inning mark. You'd like that to be a little higher, um, especially on a team like Oakland who really didn't do anything to help their bullpen uh, arguably lost their best bullpen piece la- uh, to the retirement last year uh, or in the off season. So uh, I saw your face, Joe, when it came to projecting out JP Sears's wins uh, when Kevin was talking about it, how, how many wins do you have him projected out to in your projections? Okay, I am no Kyle Bland. I'm going to go out there and say Kyle is so, so much smarter than I am. It is just like I can't even put into words how much smarter he is than I am. And his are all based on computer 
you know, they're computer based projections. Mine are done by hand. His are done by modeling. Mine is simply done by looking at different pages on picture list at fan graphs, baseball savant and baseball reference and the rest of it. I had them down for six wins. I have them for six wins over 154 innings with a 441 ERA, uh, 126 whip. I might be selling them a little short with six wins, but how many wins is Oakland going to win? How many games is Oakland going to win? 50, 55? May- maybe he can get to 10, 12. I mean, the, I mean, I was more conservative. Like doing con- doing projections, I tried to be more conservative for the first year because I've never done them. I didn't want to be projecting like Strider for 22 wins or, you know, things like things of that nature. But the guys I have for 12 wins are like Pablo Lopez, Burns, Castillo, Kirby, Eflin, Glass now, Nola. Like I, I, I was maybe a little too cautious, but for JP Sears to get to 12 wins, he'd have to pitch close to 200 innings, I feel like, and not miss a start. Like that is best, absolute best case scenario, I think. But again, like Kyle, take Kyle's word over mine. <laughs> like 100 times out of 100, take Kyle's word over mine. It yeah. just seems like a really high number. I think that the only pushback I have is um, I can't imagine that Oakland won't just let him ride throughout the course of the season. Yeah. So at least matching his 172, the, the 170, 180 innings, I think is very much in the cards for JP Sears. And if he can do that over the course of 30 to 32 starts like he did last year and not you know miss any time or what have you, uh, he can at least put himself in the position to win. Now, how many of those games is Oakland going to hold on to the lead? How their bullpen, et cetera, et cetera. All those other variables come into play. Uh, something to consider for sure, unless you're just, you know, betting on the first five innings of a game. Um, and then, you know, maybe you, you hedge your bet a little bit there. Um, let's get into the guys that we might be avoiding. Kevin, I'm going to let you lead us off here. Uh, again, the rules here this is your avoid. You cannot draft them, you cannot pick them up. Um, you know, in theory, you wouldn't even draft them in like a draft and hold where you can't actually make pickups. Uh, they had to have been between 250 and 350 in online championship ADPs, but and they must have been drafted in 100% of all of those drafts. So regardless of what their ADP is, they had to have been drafted everywhere. So you know this guy is being drafted. Uh, who are you not drafting? All right. So if using February's OC ADP, uh, the 41 drafts, uh, like Joe is, only 16 pitchers are are available to choose from uh, using those metrics. And, you know, there's the, the easy one for me that, that, that I, I could have thrown out there just because so many of us have the same question. It's like, is he really going to be a starter? That would, would be Jordan Hicks. But we've talked about that. A lot of people are talking about it. Uh, actually, I heard, uh, once again, Eno Saris talk recently about, oh, he, he sees some things. He's not so sure this isn't going to work. I'm like, oh, uh, maybe I need to take another look. Anytime Eno talks good of a pitcher uh, that I'm down on, I, I go take another look. But I'm going to go with Chris Paddock here. And it really is um, a, a, about those innings, right? He's, I don't think, other than his rookie season, which occurred in 2019, and it's amazing that what he did uh, doing it in 2019 when we know what the ball was like, but he hasn't averaged five innings per start since then and he barely did it then so it, it, it's been five years since he's went five innings per start and, and really that i i can stop there the twins have done great things with with pitching recently uh we, i i keep bringing up that you know obviously they're buying into to analytical data we've, we've seen how they play matchups and such throughout the year hopefully there's something uh, that they see in Chris Paddock and they can help stretch him out. But you know, the, you know, uh, Jake Odorizzi, his best pitching he's done in his career was in Minnesota when they would never let him face any hitter a third time. Right. So I, I see this going with Chris Paddock and I just don't think he's going to qualify for many wins at all. I, 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 you know, I, 
I would project him for around that six, like like Joe's talking about, uh, that he has JP Sears for, um, you know, and the, and the projection systems on on fan graphs have him for seven and eight. Zips actually only has him for five, uh, but they only have him for half the playing time. I don't think they've updated as recently as the others and consider him being in the rotation yet. Uh, so that would change that a little bit. But yeah, um, Chris Paddock, I, I hope the best for him. I really do. He's fun to watch. Loved watching him in 2019, but uh, he's not going to be on any of my fantasy teams unless he's available on the wire, which I doubt. He's going a little earlier than that, and he has been drafted in in all of the OCs in, in February. That was once again one of the one of the rules for the game. So I don't see him being available. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to draft him. All right, fair enough. Yeah, that Jake Odorizzi in Minnesota, that was very frustrating. Um, if you if you rostered him and you were hoping maybe and, and that's probably <laughs> it was probably the best for him. No, absolutely. And yeah, the yeah. twins. And I see that that could be that way for Paddock, and that's horrible for us. <laughs> as as a lot of these decisions in real life tend to be. Uh you're like you completely understand the reasoning, but you hate it anyway. Exactly. Uh, Joe, who, what, uh, what pitcher that's being picked in all of these drafts between 250, 350, uh, are you avoiding at all costs? I couldn't believe that he was being taken or that he had been taken in every single draft. But for me, it's Luis Severino. I just can't do it. 264 is where he's been going um, between a range of 230 and 310. And he had a, a couple innings, scoreless innings today. People are already filling up my timeline. I was seeing it all morning about how he's back. Severino's back. It's going to be old Severino. Maybe it's going to be old Severino, but there's nothing in the numbers that suggests that. I mean, if we've looked at what he's done over the last several years, strikeout rates going down like drastically. He used to be 29, 30 plus percent strikeout rate guy who struck out less than 20% of batters this year. He was also somebody who during his peak years of 17 and 18 with the Yankees, was a six and a half, seven percent walk rate guy who is now above eight. I mean, if you look at the strikeout minus walk rate, it was 10.8 percent. The ERA was almost at seven. He's never healthy. I know people want to buy into the new situation and he'll be fixed all of a sudden, but there's nothing that really suggests that. And his prices, it's not like people are taking a last round DC pick on him. He's going in the 700s. He's going in the top 20 rounds of drafts. And for me, that's just like, egregiously too much. I wouldn't take him in the 30th round, let alone the 20th. So I'm I'm way, way out on Luis Severino. I, th- I mean, this is a nice conversation because it's like these are the play you, you see this, you see this conversation a lot in the like the first five rounds. It's like who, who you know who's going too high for you to worry about. These are guys that are being drafted at a reasonable price and you're still completely out on them uh so i think that that is uh worth you know wor- worth considering as you are entering the bottom third of your draft um you can take guys off your board uh simple as that like and just not worry about one adp what everybody else is doing uh and worry about what makes sense in your eyes and for your team as well and as we talk about with all in all of these episodes like you can't take all of these guys in the last round because we're we're doing this by category, you can't take them all in the last round. You only take one, so it really matters on how you've built your team, where you feel like you have the most efficiencies, and where you can make up the, the most ground. Uh, so that's why we kind of go through this episode by episode and uh, give you all the options. Uh, Kevin, lead uh, lead us to the end here with your final thoughts as as we again are in the heart of March or heading into March the heart of fantasy baseball draft season. Yeah. Just a quick reminder. uh, Like I say all the time, that thing that everybody knows, sometimes we need reminding because all the little things add up to a big thing. Uh, When when we're taking a look at this drafting players, late in drafts, chasing wins, trying, trying to add strikeouts, streaming. uh, A lot of this has to do the, the, the way we draft and structure our rosters has a lot to do with how willing we are to put time in in season right that that affects a lot of this if i i 
I talked about there's extra analysis I want to do this season before I stream a pitcher. I don't want to just look at handedness and ballpark. I want to look at pitch repertoire and how the lineups typically affair against similar style pitchers and such. If you don't have the time or don't want to put that time in, then maybe you need to draft your pitchers a little earlier in your draft so you don't have to worry about that. You know, we, we can plan our draft around what we are willing and able to do in season as well. Yeah. I mean, th- I think, uh, I think you both have mentioned this at some point. It's like, th- these are, these are wise words to live by. And I feel like we all think about this in March and then all of a sudden in a, you know, in April, all bets are off. It's hard, hard, <laughs> it's to, hard to remember. It. It's exactly. hard to keep yourself. Yeah. 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 To it. Um, and so, you know, you can think one thing in February and early March and then think in it, you know, everything changes a month later. Uh, but I think it's something worth mentioning again and again and again. <laughs> I've told you a lot recently, Adam, when we're talking about players, ask me tomorrow and I'll give you a different yeah, answer. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, I think that is going to wrap it up. Joe. Thank you so much yes. for making the time and joining us today. Uh, you know, we I gave you an intro at the beginning. I gave you an opportunity to talk about what you got going on in the middle. So I'm going to let you close it out to remind everybody who stuck around all the way uh, where they can find you and what you got going on in, in like an elevator pitch fashion. Uh, guys, I will make time for you whenever but you can check me out over on twitter at joe orico 99 and please if you're going to do anything sportsethos.com and check out all the hard work that our guys have put into the draft guide hundreds of hours literally hundreds of hours have gone into it so make sure you're checking everything out there at sportsethos.com but thank you guys for the invitation it's always great chatting with you awesome yeah thanks so much joe and of course you know make sure you're listening to joe uh, at the fantasy mlb today podcast as well wherever you're listening to this podcast you can find that podcast and it is a must add into your repertoire um, as well so uh, that is going to wrap it up for episode 153 of on the wire you can follow myself on the twitter uh, at 80 grade that's all spelled out kevin is at hasting kevin and of course follow the pod at on the wire pod I'd like to once again thank our guest joe orico for joining us this week follow them at joe orico 99 on the twitter and after all that i am adam howe on behalf of Kevin Hastings, thanks for listening, and we bid you goodbye. Walmart Plus members save on meeting up with friends. Save on having them over for dinner with free delivery with no hidden fees or markups. That's groceries plus napkins plus that vegetable chopper to make things a bit easier. Plus, members save on gas to go meet them in their neck of the woods. Plus, when you're ready for the ultimate sign of friendship, start a show together with your included Paramount Plus subscription. Walmart Plus members save on this plus so much more. Start a 30-day free trial at walmartplus.com. Paramount Plus, a central plan only. Separate registration required. See Walmart Plus terms and conditions. Luxury is meant to be livable. Discover the new leather collection at Ashley with premium quality leather sofas, recliners, and more, all built to last. No matter how many spills, scuffs, or pet-related mishaps come its way, the leather collection at Ashley is made with the durability you need for the whole family. Shop the new leather collection at Ashley and find chairs starting at $499.99 and sofas at $599.99. Ashley, for the love of home.